everybody to the Bangkok Blockchain Meetup. So I'm uh, very happy to, to have you all here. Um, it's nice to see uh, such a big crowd. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the price of cryptocurrencies today. Um, yeah, we, we started this meetup one and a, two, almost two years ago, right? Uh, it was a bear market, we were six. Now we are, I don't know, 60 people. So um, anyway, it's great. Uh, it's great to see different faces. And uh, tonight we have a great panel. Uh, first, uh, I would like to apologize on the behalf of uh, Kuntop, uh, who actually uh, just told us a couple of hours ago that he couldn't make it. But anyway, we have uh, a great figure, Kun Nick uh, from BitCup here, CTO and CIO, and we have Florent Valoy from uh, Gameloft, Guillaume uh, from Matato, and one more people from BitCup who is uh, going to join the panel. So just before we start, as we have a lot of new faces, uh, my name is Max, I'm from Matato. Uh, we are a digital asset uh, technology company. We build blockchain platform for uh, businesses here in Thailand. Been doing so since 2017. A part, a part of our team is here. And uh, we have seen different trends from the past few years. Now we thought that we talk about that we are done to have picked up today to talk about this subject. So. Um, it's going to be a conversation, a panel. Please don't be shy. Ask some questions. I mean, it's a, it's a meetup to learn something. So please, uh, we welcome any questions. So let's start. Thanks again for joining. All right, the microphone's on. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, talk about NFT. First, maybe one question. Uh, who owns an NFT here? Wow, well, not, so, not so many. All right. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna, uh, going to explain a bit about it and uh, that it's not that it's uh, something new, but uh, we, we are going to talk about it today. Uh, but first, uh, let me... Nico. Nico. Yep. Apologize again about good talk. I couldn't make it today because, you know, he is the CEO, so... It got busy sometimes. <laughs> Let's just see. So it has to be me instead. But I'm a tech businessman like him. But hopefully you can see a different aspect from from the tech side instead, right? So bear with me tonight. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good evening, uh, everyone. So my name is Flo Florent. Um, I represent tonight's Game Loft. Um, and uh, we, we're part of Vivendi, so that company we got acquired in 2016. Uh, and that's quite interesting to see uh, what is the influence in Asia uh, with, in particular, NFT or cryptocurrency over the global direction of things happening at HQ level. We are a French-based company. Uh, but obviously that has a lot of repercussions and impact uh, on, on what we do. Uh, I want also to thank you, Atato team, for, for inviting me. I mean, it's very rare those days that we can meet people, especially in the digital world that you are all uh, interested in, right, face to face. So I do a lot of conference behind my PC, so it's very good to, to be here with real people. Thank you. All right, and uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining. So uh, I'm Guillaume, I'm the founder of Atato. And uh, so we do these meetups monthly, as Max mentioned. Um, we try to have a different topic every month. And uh, today we're going to talk about NFT. Last month we talked about decentralized uh, finance. finance. So the objective of those uh, meetings is first to meet people uh, and get to know the community. And also every time to try to explain a specific topic. So today we're going to Hope to explain uh, NFT. I'm sure together we can pull it off. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining tonight. It's great to see uh, so many people. Hi, good evening. Uh, I'm uh, Samlet in uh, outside Home State. Yeah. I'm Joy become a tech director. Previously, we I work with uh, Singapore government for the NFT on the real asset to to tokenize NFT and loan the real money from uh, stable coin and pay in the fiat money. Yeah, now the project still on ongoing, but uh, after uh, COVID-19, I cannot back to Singapore. Then I stay in here 
and then just on on the know how that I work closely with the Singapore government to make the NFT not only art and or or digital asset. Yeah, we uh, I'm, I'm work with uh, the real the real asset like uh, how car LC building to tokenize to uh, ERC uh, seven to one and make it happen to you got the real uh, stable coin. We can talk later. Thanks. Thanks, Samarit. And um, so we're going to start with the first questions. But um, maybe people heard about NFT just now, but it's not something really new. I uh, remember in 2017, I think we had one employee of our company who started to collect meme. And he was buying meme online. And we looked at him and said, why? You can make a digital copy of that. I, I don't see the value. And today, there is 70 people <laughs> coming to, uh, to talk about it. So. Just want to ask you first, uh, how did you get introduced with NFT? And uh... not that type first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I go. Um, I'm actually from a game industry. So I've been in the game industry for more than ten years. I found my own game company as well. And then after that, I started a tech consulting company. And BitCup was one of my clients last year. That's how I started. So they gave me a, a really small tax to just design an NFT marketplace. A small tax, right? <laughs> just design it, you know, just the UI, right? Without having to have any knowledge about blockchain. And I didn't have any anything to know about that as well back then. So that's how I started, and then we started to work closely more and more toward the end of the year. And then we started to like my team, so. They said, why don't you come and join us? And I was like, OK, that's easy. All right. <laughs> then I came and joined BitCup in November last year. Like I told you, uh, I started as a, a consulting that, that, that only just did the UI design. Then I had to do also the blockchain now. That's how I get in, uh, introduced in NFT. OK, now I, I fully work on it. All right. Thanks, Nick. And uh, maybe from from the gaming industry, you've heard about it for quite some times, but uh, recently it has been yeah, more popular. I think it, it really uh, got boosted by all the hype uh, around the cryptocurrency in general. Uh, what what we see on our side is on on one end you have um, different uh, requirements from the business. I mean, one part of GameLoft is actually to create some games for specific brands, right? And I'm in Shadow Bay Pack, so a lot of brands in Australia, Singapore, or more advanced market come to us and say, in our creative approach and, and strategy, we want NFT, right? So like, okay, we do games for the past 20 years, right, Game Loft. Uh, well, how, how NFT can come into play, and we are not experts initially in that field, right? Um, so this is where I start to do my research. I, I consider myself lucky enough to have a, a good community of friends around me, especially in Thailand, uh, who, who gave me a lot of inputs, insights, uh, including you guys and Informatato. And that's how I got into it, right? So I was, I'm still, I consider still scratching the surface, uh, bringing solutions to the clients. And, and we are at this stage where uh, we're going to get some very concrete um, brand or client driven project, gaming project or gamified project, right? where you get reward with NFT or where the entire uh, conceptual approach is based on private ownership um, of the of the NFT that you acquire. Right? Okay. So I think that's how I got into it. All right. And I think uh, we just didn't, uh, didn't realize, we didn't explain what is an NFT. Uh, <laughs> maybe Guillaume, for some people who don't understand what is non-fungible token again. Give sure. it. So uh, yeah, I'm going to try to explain it. So let's start by uh, what is a fungible token. So I guess a lot of people in the room own Bitcoin, Ethereum, probably a lot of you, right? So one of the nice thing with Bitcoins is that more or less every Bitcoin are equal. Uh, one Bitcoin is equal to one Bitcoin, doesn't matter which one you have, right? Uh, so like Sam mentioned, so when you want to tokenize real things, yeah. There are differences. So if you have two cars, for example, and one's got a different mileage, if you want to have tokens that represent those cars, 
there's going to be slight differences. So they are not fungible. They are non-fungible tokens. So that's kind of what we mean, that yeah, it's still a token, but it's not something that you can exchange um, exactly one-to-one -one with another that represents something similar. The most obvious example is if you have two paintings and they are different, but the token is going to be different, and maybe the value that people attach to it uh, is going to be different. Um, to go back to the question of uh, what's your uh, history with NFT, so in 2017, that's really when I heard of it. Uh, at that time, maybe some of you remember CryptoKitty was one of the first games that uh, existed on Ethereum where you were buying cards. Uh, and the cards were slightly different. And uh, it was very really well made that you could actually buy the token, but also it was integrated with a game uh, where you could do certain things with the cards that you have. And so uh, that's how I got involved with it. And then at, at Atato itself, uh, in 2018, uh, we tokenized the uh, Good, uh, in the supply chain industry, so we were tokenizing containers of uh, uh, consumables uh, that were exchanged between parties, also uh, ERC721. So that's kind of uh, our experience on the on the professional side. Um, then we got heads down into uh, serving the financial industry for the past few years, and then at the end of last year we started looking at NFT again and realized, oh, there is a whole uh, ecosystem and industry that popped up, and we thought it would be interesting to, to bring everyone and, and share. Uh, Hopefully, what we learned there. So, yeah, that's the background with it. Thanks, Guillaume. I'm concerned. Okay. I want to explain my story again, right? Eh? Sure, go okay. ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I start on the gaming industry, maybe uh, 20 years. Uh, I, I start work on the Java game, and the first console game we start on the uh, Nintendo DS. And after that, uh, I work with an uh, American company called Uboxido under uh, Tomo. Tomo is in uh, Pomona, California. And I am a uh, developer license for the PlayStation, Xbox, and uh, Nintendo. Uh, until uh, 2017, uh, it's like I'm, I'm full about, about game console industry because I'm, I'm so tired for that. Every time when the new console coming, uh, I want to do with the prototype and it no engine, no anything. I want to use like an SMB to make a tool because I I got the prototype before the new console coming, like when before PS, PS4 coming, I will got the prototype to work closely in, in America, in, in LA. And I I want to back to the Bangkok, that's why I want to think something to do. Then I go to work in, with the blockchain first. But when I start work with the blockchain, uh, in the Thailand, no, no one understands blockchain. But I, I have uh, my my brother in Singapore. They work with the IBM, with with uh, the supercomputer, and they work with the Stellar project on the IBM. That's on that tab. That's why I'm I'm go to Singapore and talk. And the the first project I I work like a uh, Ethereum node in the mobile, but it doesn't work because it it not make money right? and. Uh, one year before, I I meet my the old CEO now, well, Mr. Wong Chong Lim. He like a uh, certain one. Certain one is a Singapore-based company, and they got investment from the maker. You know maker, yes, uh, AI, yes, stable coin. The maker invest in the the certain one in the first round in the seed fund, and uh, the CEO talk to maker about how to. Uh, Min Dai not use only Ethereum. On that time, you use Ethereum to Min Dai right? in uh, CDP. We talk about how to use the real asset to, to Min Dai from the CDP system. And that, that because uh, Mr. Huang Chuang, that, that work only with the PSA. PSA is Port Singapore Authorization. Yeah, they have loaned about 80 billion US dollar per year. To loan around our, our country and then uh, use LC to loan. Yeah. That's why right. then it have the idea how we tokenize uh, the LC to NFT. Yeah. This is uh, 2000. The, the LC is a letter of credit. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. This, that, this is the first time that I know the NFT and uh, we, we talk closely with the maker how to make. Uh, NFT to collateral die, yeah. But for the maker protocol, they want on 
uh, as to port and government board. But now we we part the government board for the green line already. We we got word about forty two k MKR to what part? Yeah, it it mean in the in the six month after this, yeah, we can tokenize NFT and you can use that NFT to to meet that for several coins. Okay, but just uh, because some people for some people NFT is just a piece of art or video games items or. Now you're talking about letter of credit, so it's uh, uh, yeah, it's not it's only that, right? yeah, it's letter of credit, yeah, letter of credit from the financial, it's not a video game. Yeah. So it, uh, just to explain that actually NFTs are not only for art, music, or, or sports cars that we uh, you have seen. It's also for goods and items that are in the business side. Yeah. Like letter of credit. As yeah, well. yeah. That's why when uh, I talk with the cup, I go to con consult for big cup in uh, October last year. And now when I know become want to make NFT, I am joining up for the tech director to make all the know-how that I know to work with the government, how to tokenize, how to have like audit and legal to make it have the real value and tokenize to the stable coin. Because now, uh, if you are so Bitcoin, Bitcoin is going to launch a stable coin in Thailand. <laughs> I, I will told that. Okay, you can imagine, you can imagine. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. That 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 I I know the NFT. Yeah. All right. Very interesting, and uh, <laughs> thank you for for the insight. Um, NFTs are not new, right? So um, I mean, we hear about it uh, today because uh, Elon Musk is uh, is putting one online, and uh, people uh, sold for sixty million uh, a couple of weeks ago a painting, digital painting online. But it's important to understand that it's not a new trend. So it's a new trend, but it's not a new item. It's been here for a couple of, a couple of years. So, um, yeah, one thing I would like to uh, to talk about it. It's of course when we talk about NFT, we talk about the gaming industry. Uh, last year, forty seven percent of the NFTs that were created were in the game industry. So, just would like to ask you, Florent, from your I would say gaming industry expert eyes, um, what do you see in this industry coming? Is it changing it? Well, on our side, so we mostly seeing some big games right out there on the nft and the the most uh, i mean known one i guess uh, are the central land uh, axie adventure in um, axie sorry uh, yeah uh, and where also the economy that is created uh, behind it the pokemon also was ideal so the economy behind it is quite of interesting in the way understood that uh, you could get players to actually play to earn for you uh, the NFT on your behalf, right? And then you share and split the value of that particular Ethereum um, between you and the, the player. So it's like you become a manager of a team, right? That play on your behalf. And from what I understood, right, in, in the Philippines, in Vietnam, I don't know so much in Thailand if we have these kind of players, but I imagine so. And that's interesting. C coming back to um, what sort of games right now? First, those games they are not available on Play Store and App Store, right? So it's not the regular way, I would say, to access games. I mean, if you talk to the mass community, they just saw an advertising on their uh, digital journey and then they download, they click, they click, sorry, and download from App Store and Play Store, right? That's a regular way to, to access content, gaming content. For the NFT part, right now it is all APK based, so you have to land on a different uh, hosted page and, and download the APK. You have Google saying this is unknown source. Would you accept to click? And so you have a bit of uh, understanding and, and knowledge to have, right, to access that particular, particular sorry, gaming experience. So I wouldn't say it is so uh, mass market yet, as opposed to uh, PUBG, Free Fire, or even Asphalt on our side. Uh, however, it is picking up very fast, and um, and the kind of games as well that I see is um, battle games, right, with cards, right, that you exchange and play to uh, to earn something, and and um, yeah, it's it's a bit different based on land, like the um, decentralized land and so on. So I I think there are more uh, gameplays to to come and to be. Um, Created, you have this uh, interesting, I would say, alliance of uh, you call it blockchain uh, gaming alliance, right? Which Ubisoft is part of. Right? So not Gamelock. It used to be the same company than 
uh, we split it, right? So it was founded by Michel Guillemot, and when I was working for him, um, before he created Gameloft, I could see it was really already into Python and all the, the key technology at that time, right, like in, uh, 20 years ago. So now it is, of course, some companies go full on, I would say, into the NFT uh, technology, and, and they truly believe so. Uh, on our side, we part of this um, uh, Vivendi company, so obviously they have Universal Music Group, they have Dailymotion, uh, books with NFT, so NFT is definitely at the essence of the creation of content, ownership, and also anti-piracy uh, tradable, I would say, process. So it is at the heart of the strategy, but might take more time, right? So we, we don't have this uh, strategic innovation lab, what they call, a very uh, nimble approach, right, to keep a of subject. So depending on the company, I would say uh, NFT on the gaming space, is seen differently, and uh, but this is definitely a growing trend. And I think from the buyers and um, and uh, creators' perspective, it it, uh, it is very interesting in a way. It drives new value, right? To connect this digital world with the physical elements and the connection and own uh, directly by the players makes a lot of sense, right? Um, and keeping the history of your games, your best match, if you play shooting games or uh, football games, right? You probably heard uh, one of the fantasy sport games with Ubisoft, right? Uh, football games with the Belgian team. So there are many different uh, new ventures, I would say, that are coming, but it's still uh, a bit niche in a way that people need to access the APK, as I mentioned, not available for iOS, so you need to play online. And the, the, it has some improvements uh, and, and things to, to go on the way. Yeah. Thanks well, for the insight. And maybe, Nick, uh, from your previous company, before we go to talk about BitCup, um, have you seen this trend before? I mean, you told us yes, right? Um, what do you expect for the gaming industry to come and the years to come about NFT? Okay, um, <clears throat> I actually know NFT back in 2017, I guess. Was that the year that Crypto Kitty happened? So it made the whole Ethereum network like contested. A, and I don't know, you, have you guys been, been through that moment? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all the audience. <clears throat> yes. And I want to Someone tried to do a, a swap on the chat. Mm. Yeah, so I think from the developer standpoint, like I am, I used to think about making CryptoKitty back then, but without knowledge or even um, community to find out what to do, it just like doesn't let me uh, explore on it. There was not uh, as much platform as there is today, right? Yeah, but as, as I see now, there are many like uh, community and helpers and even tools for developers to uh, leverage NFTs for their games. Like for example, if you want to have, if you want to make um, Minecraft and you have some potions and you want those potions to be on blockchain and tradable, right? You can implement those very easily now without having to have to write any smart contract. You know, you can just copy the code and define yourself. And you, immediately have the blockchain working. Okay. So it, it enables a lot of, because developer is very important to to enable the industry, the right. growth industry, yeah. right. With only audience or with only users, there would be no games. We need game developers. And with uh, the, the growth of the industry and people start to come a lot, there are many people making tools that help developers to implement those features. Okay, thanks. So I, so I wish I had this. <laughs> this idea is too late for me. So that's the big question, right? Uh, why is it so valuable? And uh, today, I mean, we talk about crypto kitties. Back in 2017, I think the record was something like 300,000, and uh, we thought it was crazy. Today, it's uh, 67 or 69 million for a piece of art. Um, it's growing fast. So I don't know, maybe Guillaume, you can tell us uh, why do you think it's, it's that valuable today and why did it raise the past? Sure. So, thank 
Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, first disclaimer, obviously we're in a bubble. So I think there's, there's a big impact from that. Um, and I think, you know, NFT are, have as much value as people are willing to give them. I mean, it's obvious, but I think why they've become more valuable is that in 2017, not many people had Bitcoin or Ethereum or had made transaction or had made uh, those expensive swaps that you just tried to do today. Uh, and in the past four years, a lot of people have. And uh, I think right now in the US, it's what 30% of uh, people under 40 own crypto, for example. So it's just that the education of people with blockchain in general is, is much bigger. So you have this scale uh, that's much more different, right? And uh, the number of NFTs is the same, right? There is just one kitty with that particular uh, look and, and features. Uh, so that probably has an impact on price. Uh, I think also what's very different is that in 2017, we didn't really trust NFTs that much. You know, it's uh, it's just a funny game. Uh, it's called CryptoKitty, and uh, who knows what's going to happen with it or Ethereum. I don't really care. I'm just going to play with it for fun. And I think right now people have this understanding that blockchains are here to stay, that uh, if you buy a token, it actually belongs to you. Nobody's going to take it. Uh, that probably in the future you can sell it also, and maybe you're going to make a profit. So I think it's just that generally blockchain as a tool has become part of the what society accepts uh, as a way to exchange value. Um, and I think that's really interesting. Uh, and that's probably why uh, so much money is going into NFT because people have been buying out always, right? It's not a new thing. Uh, but maybe now a, a bigger portion of those uh, investment and that market is going into NFT. So that, that would be my tech, the scale, right? Uh, then the fact that it's accepted socially, and then uh, just uh, the fact that the number of NFTs and valuable ones has not changed, probably those three factors uh, drive the price up. Okay. So, yeah, anybody want to? No, that's maybe uh, actually uh, for the next questions, and that's the reason why BitCap is launching uh, NFT marketplace, right? And uh, so, what was the idea behind? Can you talk a bit about it? And I know it's not launched yet, right? But I received an announcement on my email, so maybe you, you should be able to talk about it, right? Okay, just tell us what you're talking about. It's a tricky question. It's, it's supposed to be on January. So we're uh, supposed to launch it on January. Yeah, yeah. I think he, he, he the co CTO, he, <laughs> you, 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 you can start. And I, I don't know if this can talk or not. So like I told you my history, we're supposed to launch, to actually launch the NFT on January. But as you, as you guys may know, we had a, a big incident, right, in, on January, where our system went down for a long time. And we had to, you know, even me on the innovation team had to had to help the core team or the exchange. So I had to stop everything entirely and no sleep for a week to yeah. fix everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we tried to run an NFT market as soon as possible. Yeah, did 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 we we try? Yeah. But, uh, for the NFT market in in the Thailand because in in the name of the big cup, it's not like a uh, full decentralized. It's like a decentralized uh, under SET. Okay, you know that that means uh, did uh, we we don't know how how to to throw that, but it's like a uh, decentralized under control, something like that. Under yeah, under regulation. Yeah, decentralized under regulation. Yeah. And how is it, how is that decentralized? You, you want me to, to talk everything? I'm a moderator now. <laughs> so if you are under declaration, how, how is it decentralized? Uh, it means, okay, the full decentralized, your own private key. But for the BitCup, you and BitCup own private key together. That's something like that. And everyone that, that go to the NFT market of the BitCup, okay, it have someone try to to cheat you. It because it under uh, under a, a little bit control. But every control we want to get from the police letter or anything. It it means we can't don't store your asset, you know. But we we want to make sure your asset is not lost. Okay. 
oh my god, you really have to tell, you know? So, okay, I let you go. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, but it's uh, the, the, my question behind was all right. Bitcoin is an exchange where you deal with cryptocurrencies and uh, people go on your platform to buy it. Yeah. And you are launching an NFT platform in January. Yeah. Um, obviously, you see it as a growing part of your business in the future, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I would like to, to understand the reasoning behind. So you believe there is a market. Yeah. We are not really in a bubble, or maybe we are, but you believe in it for the next five to six years, right? Yeah. Yeah. We. Uh, for the NFT, we, we believe now, if you told me it the bubble or not bubble, I think it, it depends on the NFT that you buy. You know? Some NFT, I think it's not bubble, but some NFT, it's sure it bubble. So, but I cannot tell this bubble or not bubble, you know? Because, yeah, because it, it made you live, it's not bubble. You know? <laughs> when, when you lost, it bubble. You know? <laughs> now it's not bubble, because everyone happy. You know? Okay. Uh, for, for the Bitcoin, we, okay, we try to, to make the NFT with the real asset, like a real art, yeah, the, art the, the, the physical art to make the NFT. It means the value from maybe from the auction place, from, from everything, you know. And I will use the, the, the technology that we, I'm, I'm using in Singapore to, uh, uh, like a, uh, to make how how much value for that NFT, you know? Because we we should like a one one guy like an auditor, one guy like a legal to check this NFT is legal. Because the NFT art or music or everything we want to check. You got it from legal, you like owner or anything so, like that. So how will you check? Do you know? Um. Yeah. Uh. The easy for for the legal, we should have one. Um. One legal, the real, real guy, you know, that can sign the NFT. That means that, that NFT sign with one legal or lady, this legal check, you know, it's like a people. And we have another people, we call credit guy, to, to credit that NFT. Then after to sign, sign to NFT that, to, to that NFT, it means that NFT already legal. Okay. After that, we can use that NFT to loan, to credit loan, to anything, you know, and because when you are not uh, repayment the loan, yeah, we we can collateral your NFT and give to someone. Okay. So yeah. Easy. Yeah. All right. And what kind of do you expect? I mean, it's not launched yet, of course. But what is what is your expectation? What kind of NFT do you expect to see on Bitcoin uh, NFT chain? Okay. Um, <clears throat> we are going to do. And the first NFT edition with uh, Thailand top influencers. The, yeah, the the fan token is part of it, but we will we will uh, basically digitalize their you know face, and, you know moments or or videos with NFT. Uh, back on December, we were exploring which blockchain are we going to launch this on, right? We were looking at flow if you guys know it and we will get some layer to uh, solution because the challenge is once we launch this nft imagine a top four influencer in thailand they have like 40 million people following in thailand so we we have a challenge about the the performance of the blockchain and the cost right so we have lost so many things and we ended up Thinking about launching our own blockchain soon. Um, it's going to be called BitCup Chain. This is the first time I talk about it publicly. Oh, nice. If you talk, I can talk. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't know what I can talk or not. You, you should open first. You know? I know you want to talk about it, so I do it for you. That, that way, we can customize the blockchain in the way we want to serve a lot of users. And to also have to, to partially liquidate. Because we know 99% of our users are mass users. They have no idea how to protect their private key. What if we do lending or loan in a blockchain and they got stolen or they, they lost their private keys, right? We want to make sure that we help them. Right. Okay. Uh, honestly, we have we have two frames. Okay. The the one we call uh, 
uh, decentralized under regulate and another fact it decentralized not regulate yeah <laughs> yeah it's, this, 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 it, it seems like a joke eh? but we 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 think uh, a lot of people in Thailand that they, they, they know like I said now they know uh, a, the crypto exchange from the big hub yeah but they don't know uh, DeFi yet yeah a lot they know okay the DeFi get you a uh, the big profit but someone lost so much okay that's why we think we should have like uh, uh, the small yeah the, the small playground for someone that new and they want to get like a uh, the bigger dividend not only in the current bank you know maybe uh, if you go to the real DeFi maybe you got about maybe uh, 100% BI per, per year or maybe uh, 10,000 yeah but on the uh, DeFi under regulate maybe you got 10 or 12 percent per year but I think it's enough for someone to start okay if you strong you can go to the next yeah it, it same like you go to like a casino right? yeah, a small table and if, if you I hope nobody from the SEC is here yeah. I know casino is it's legal I come yeah <laughs> in Singapore yeah come from Singapore yeah it's legal yeah 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 some table is only five dollar yeah if if you can uh, strong you can go to like a ten dollar hundred dollar yeah it's something like that all right and I just want to jump back on 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 the uh, what's it, big cap chain, right? That you are going to launch. Uh, let's say that I'm an NFT creator, right? And um, I would like to launch it on, on, I would say, on a public market. And uh, will your chain be compatible? Or people who create an NFT in Thailand will only be able to uh, to trade it on on big cap chain? Well, of course, making a new blockchain should be compatible with other chains. Like we do a bridge between chains. But so meaning. Uh, the NFT creators, like artists, could put their arts on our chain or you know any any chain they want. Right? But uh, the the good thing about using our chain is is protected, is uh, is cheaper, is faster. Well, comparing to the yellow, the B yellowish chain, <laughs> uh, is it's very scary because uh, they own all the nodes. But BitCup would partner with a lot, lots of companies in Thailand, in, including universities and some government agencies. We will help us running the, the blockchain. So there will be hundreds of nodes that verify by like everyone in Thailand. Yes, partially regulated still. So for example, some some protocol that is uh, dangerous, like um, something that you could lose money. You probably have to go to uh, KYC of your Ethereum address. But for something that is more fun, like game or NFT or whatever, you can just do it by yourself. That's the idea of why we need a new blockchain for Thailand. Okay. Thank you. You want to add something? Good. Oh, no, no. I, I just uh, for more detail, okay, for the own blockchain. We we have idea to make uh, the own the own uh, node because. Uh, the one thing in the Thailand because big cup is under regulate. Yeah, that's why we have idea for make the new the co Ethereum compatible that we make it. But uh, the difference is every update that can uh, make transaction in the blockchain, this update should KYC first. If this update not KYC, you cannot transaction or deposit my contact in the chain. We we modify a little bit on on this node. Yeah. But uh, don't don't worry, someone don't like it. Don't worry, we have the next phase. You don't want to KYC. Yeah, the big table, you can pay around, you can do anything, you can lose your asset. We we not control you. But for this, this is like uh, the beginner. Yeah, you can saw uh, the mere cat, right? Mere cat or uh, the one yeah, the one that two. Mere cat, right? The turtle and the cat, you, you saw the, the BNB, the Lapu about uh, 14 million. Yeah, but I, I know that they try to get the money out, but cannot because in an, it's under uh, Binance. But uh, for BitCup, we think more than that. Because this is the big money, it's easy to buy. If small money, it's really hard to buy. That's why if every 
at that that uh, participate without change. We know who doing. That's why we can use the the Thai law to do something with that guy. If he try to someone to cheat you or make like a stupid smart contact to to let uh, like a policy, you know. Yeah, that's why we we try to protect that. After you strong, you understand. Now I let you go to outside. You can pay allow. You can bet more. You can do everything that you want. But if you hurt, you can come back. Yeah. No, no, no. It's a uh, no. It's a uh, very interesting. Thank you. And uh, maybe um, Dion, I have a question for you. Uh, I mean, you've been in the blockchain industry uh, for many years, right? And uh, now we are seeing some of those uh, private blockchains from exchanges uh, coming up. Um, what do you think? It's compared to a public blockchain like Ethereum. What would be your your take on those blockchain chain? Sure. So uh, yeah, I think it's a uh, it's natural, right? There there is more demand, so the public network cannot meet all the demand. This is why uh, it's quite expensive to use Ethereum these days. Uh, now, one of the key things you mentioned is that your chain is going to be Ethereum compatible, right? So yeah. so you know that there is this huge developer community. You can't go and invent your own language and and all of that, right? Uh, and I think this is something that uh, we see more and more, like Binance Smart Chain. Is it called Bitcoin Smart Chain, by the way? <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, okay. So anyway, just kidding. Um, everything's going to be Ethereum based, in my opinion. Uh, just like every computer network is based on the same standard, and that's why computers can talk with one another across the world. So I think similarly, as long as all the chains are Ethereum based, investors are going to be able to move tokens. And uh, we're using those bridges that you mentioned, for example. So you will move your tokens maybe from Bitcoin to Binance one day. Um, maybe in the short term they're going to do that over the Ethereum public network. Sorry, I, I shouldn't say I shouldn't say it's possible, but uh, it's going to happen, right? You know, those tokens are going to go on other network and, and live their life, right? They will go up anyway. So um, I think that Ethereum public network is going to act like the public Ethereum, um, with the difference that it's going to be an expensive piece of infrastructure to utilize. Uh, probably in ten years. Everyday people, retail users, won't be using Ethereum much, uh, and we will think back about the days where we used to use Ethereum directly. Uh, and so, I think that's one of the powerful thing with this ecosystem is that it allows to be basically a purpose-specific or country-specific blockchain. And so, switch to this one. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, I think uh, that's one of the great thing of Ethereum is that it. It scales, maybe not in the way that we think of naturally, but just it scales by having those different chains. Uh, I have a question for you. I'm not sure if you can reply, but is there going to be a Taibat token on your chain? Is there going to be a Taibat token on your chain? Nobody from the DOT? No? no. no? We, we, we have UNDT. Why? Because <laughs> <laughs> we have a stable coin in, in the world. Yeah, UNDT, UNDC, DAI. Yeah, one. One new entity is 30, 30 Thai baht. Why you want Thai baht? <laughs> right? We you can use you, you on stable file, yeah. All right, so maybe in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make a coin called Diamond. All right. Oh, sorry, sorry. The same amount. I will call it a Diamond, and then for some, for some reason, it's the same price as Thai baht. Right. It's a Thai stable coin, but I just call it Diamond. Sorry. Yeah. It's depending on the perspective. What I want in what I want. Yeah. Okay. Like All right. Um, so let, let's go back to <laughs> on the, uh, on the NFT. That, that's just <laughs> topic. I think we're going to speak to an to a interesting conversation, but maybe uh, it's for another one. And um, <laughs> So we talk about half, we talk about games. Um, I would like to come back on something that uh, um, we discussed at the beginning, but I think it's quite important that NFTs are not only half. Or, or a piece of, uh, of music. Um, maybe, Guillaume, just quickly, can you explain uh, NFT? We have been developing it since 2018 for consumer goods, and now they are going to be more and more used. Um, can you just explain a bit for people who are not familiar with it, what it was? And... Yeah, so so you're right. It's not only gaming. Uh, it's, a, it's a strong use case. And I, maybe some of you remember Loom. Um, you know, right, the crypto zombies and uh, and their card games. So they were maybe one of the pioneers actually in that space. Um, so it, it came from that. Um, but 
your NFT can be used to represent letter of credit. It can be used to represent uh, another piece of art, intellectual property. The, the basic idea is that you have something uh, that you want to represent using a token, and you trust that the holder of the token holds the rights uh, attached to that thing. So it could be a royalty contract, it could be a house, it could be a car, uh, it could be a letter of credit. And so what's really become interesting uh, in the recent months is that uh, now people trust this. You know, it's simple as this, but uh, just like you trust Bitcoin to send and receive Bitcoin, just like you trust DeFi to lend and borrow money, now people trust NFT to uh, transfer the rights attached uh, with an off-chain asset. Um, and so I think that's already what's uh, interesting. And where is it going to go? I don't know. Uh, where do we see it going? So art, gaming, and also this idea of um, uh, engaging with uh, a community. So for example, with uh, the fan uh, uh, token or ecosystem. Uh, I think it's probably going to affect soon commerce. Uh, because exchanging goods and services is, uh, you know, what we do all day, we call it business, right? So uh, I think it's going to have an impact very soon because now people trust NFT to model assets. And so uh, maybe we're going to see soon um, marketplaces for uh, actual goods, maybe commodities, uh, maybe things that are not listed, not traded, uh, it's maybe something to watch for. All right, thanks. And uh, my question for Florent, uh, actually in the gaming industry, um, maybe some of the gamers are here Remember Star Citizen, the, the amazing game that never launched. And uh, you could buy, uh, and Guillaume is crying right now because he bought a, a spaceship some years ago. But um, now you could buy this asset of the game, financing the game. Um, we talk about the gaming industry for NFT almost all the time, and after for art. I know that uh, for the past few months it has been quite a, a frenzy, but do you expect uh, the gaming industry to be changed by NFT? And just to finish like this, there was a, a NFT platform for selling uh, NFTs that just raised $23 million, which is called uh, OpenSea. And um, I think it's just the start of those platforms that emerge. And I would like to have your opinion, Florent, uh, on the game. Yeah, J just to take a step back uh, on the industry itself. So 2019, just to quote the number, is $175 billion worldwide, the idea of the uh, gaming, mobile, and, and uh, PC console, right? Uh, expected to grow at 200 billion by 2023. So the car growth is kind of big. Biggest markets, uh, US on, on the west side, China on the other end, and uh, well, Japan, Korea, and a bit of, uh, well, India is actually booming, and they start to have not only DAUs, but people that are spending uh, in app purchase and transact. You probably have heard about uh, real money gaming, right? Which is a very big thing uh, specific to India at the moment and Indonesia, right? So you have companies like Swinzo, um, MPL, uh, uh, where a lot of Sequoia and, and a lot of uh, VCs are investing big monies, right? Where you actually play, right? Um, to earn money uh, based on tournaments that you chip in very small amount of money, right? So I believe that at some point this entire uh, side of the business specific to real money gaming, which is still based, right? I mean, some people call it gambling, some other not. For a true fact, it is fully legal in India, right? So that's why it is booming over there. And they found a way, right, to get only uh, a lot of players, but payers, right? So you pay a very small amount of money again to take part into a, a tournament, a matchmaking tournament. Uh, just think like a Tinder, right? You compete against someone and then you, if you are in the top score, you get 80% uh, of the money put and 20% goes to the platform owners and to the publisher, right? So this is the ecosystem. And I, I really believe it's going to come fast with the uh, uh, NFT transaction and all the technology behind it, right? To secure the transaction, to make sure there is no uh, addiction as well to all this money you can make through, through gaming. So that's uh, specific to... Uh, India and the change that I foresee personally uh, on that front. On the other hand, I, I believe um, there is a big role to play into esports, right? So we all know that uh, esports players uh, earn a lot of money if they are in the top ranks, and, and that's a real uh, business or, or, or revenue generator, right? Or income, right? So I believe at some point they will be paid through uh, also uh, NFTs. 
and and brands will see a real interest, right, to bring some uh, uniquely created uh, or crafted, if I may say, uh, items, right, that uh, esport players can actually uh, compete or earn through their uh, competition and, and price. So it's not only a prize money, but something that they really own uh, forever on the long term or can trade later on for, for value. Um, the third, third thing that I see in terms of impact in, in the gaming industry is how games are financed. Uh, so probably IDO, if I understand correctly, that's how you call it now. Um, to, to create a new games uh, entirely based on the community, right? So that's also a different way uh, with the blockchain in the background, right? So that's the, also one of the change I, I see. Uh, the third one, and the very fourth one, and that's really coming from a B2B2C uh, point of view, is that we work with a lot of brands uh, in Gameloft, right, as I was saying. So we create games for, let's say, Ferrero. Right now, if you go in any 7-Eleven or Family Mart uh, in Asia or any other uh, retailers uh, and mom-and-pop shops in, in the world, you can buy a Kinder, right, for your kids open up. You will see the, the toys inside, right? Uh, and there is an application we've done for Ferrero, right, which is a very old-school company based in Italy, right, but with a lot of money. Um, and they... Um, they ask us to create this entire end-to-end -end consumer journey, right, where you can scan the physical toys, right, and, and get the kids or the parents behind to, um, to uh, digitalize that item into a game and a scrapbook where the kids will be creating its all unique experience. So you know the scrapbook, right, when the kids can draw, but, well, here the entire experience is, is digital. Uh, they didn't come into the NFT world yet, but I, I really believe that's a future extension of it. Uh, and, and I see a lot of different use cases and brands. I mean, we know Louis Vuitton is doing this right now. Uh, Nike for the sneakers drops, right? They, they do have all the artists behind. And having this digital and physical tie-up, I think, makes a lot of sense for the, for the owners. So for me, it's maybe not only digital, but also like the physical counterparts, right? But maybe 20 or 30 years after, when your shoes is not there, you still have a fizzy ownership of the digital yeah, legacy indeed. of it. Indeed, and thanks, Florent, for, for, for your views. And uh, on, um, I, I just put behind, actually, this company that's so high. Um, um, you know, NFT is not uh, only huge in the gaming, but in the sport industry. I mean, a lot of, uh, not only Thai people, but everybody is a big fan of uh, football clubs. Um, now you can own actually some digital tokens of those clubs, uh, participate in the life of this club actually in a more uh, point minute manner. And um, my question was for, for actually BitCub, for your future NFT platform. Um, you talk about art, right, about the influencer. I believe this is the first step. Uh, Thai people love football and uh, they love those clubs here. Uh, do you see it kind of the additional NFTs that are going to be able to be traded on your chain, or is it something that you are looking? At? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Big cup. Uh, now, now we think about two kind. One, it uh, token. Token it represents uh, something that uh, you can say like a small piece of art. For the NFT. No. Okay. We represent about something that uh, non-fungible. Okay, the non-fungible for the gaming, for the art. Yeah, I think everyone know that a lot in the internet. Yeah, for the future that we come thinking, we thinking about something that unique more than that. Like your table that you saw it. Okay, now if everything that that you need, we change to the NFT. It easy for the company for everyone to to transfer the owner. Now, you you thinking about when you want to sell your car or maybe you want to sell your your laptop. How can you check it? You are on laptop. If your laptop it go to the NFT and the serial number in the blockchain, it's so easy for you to to transfer uh the NFT to someone. It means they buy it, already buy for you, okay? And you give your laptop. If you not give, maybe. You, that can use that NFT to police station and show, hey, I am the owner of the laptop. Okay. And in the future, it, it's easy when your company 
you want to sell your assets from the company. Now, the assets from the company, it, it really hard for you to reach on the asset. But in the future, if all the asset, if all the NFT, you can sell all the NFT to, to the new company, and the owner of the asset, you move. Yeah, this is that, that we be thinking. And we thinking uh, more than like, uh, now you know, most of the people when the Bitcoin pie up, they never sold the Bitcoin. Because when, if you sold the Bitcoin in the exchange, you will got the money like step by step. Then most of the people use the Bitcoin to, to, to load, load the money. When you load, maybe you got like, a, 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 let's say maybe a 70% or 7% or 60% depend on the pool. Yeah. But if Bitcoin pie up, you can lend more. Then we think about if you use your house to, to tokenize. Yeah. Thinking when you loan money from the banking, you have maybe 1 million or 2 million. But in the future, when you have go to 4 million, the bank not refinance for you. You want to refinance by yourself, right? But for the NFT, when the price is up, you can lend more money and easy to, to transfer to the, the new new one. Yeah, Some, something like that. And we think about the NFT should listen to you. You have value. It means you have unique. You have the income. You have the future income like a credit card. That means if we can tokenize NFT to several coins and you can use that, it means we can use all the algorithm like AI or big data to use the NFT to calculate your value and give you the future money. So think like that. If you say the cool top will uh, tokenize himself on the uh, NFT, we can invest on him, right? And uh, if he build a uh, big cap to a yeah, unicorn, we're going to profit from it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, just, uh, you know, we, we keep talking. Uh, I would like to just uh, pass uh, some few questions for, from the, the crowd. I know it's always difficult to be the first one, but please help us not to be the awkward moment. Thank you very much. Gonna walk in the middle of people. Hello. Oh. Hello. I'm very curious about the tokenizing property. Uh, property. Tokenization, how would you transfer the titles? How would you transfer the property title? The, the property? Okay. Um, in, uh, I, I got just get in the Singapore, you know, not, not in the Thailand, because in the Thailand, it have uh, a lot of for the legal, we not that yet. Yeah. For the Singapore, after you you're, you're token nine, because we work for, closely with the government, yeah, after you, uh, you transfer to the new owner, you can use that tokenize uh, to like a custodian. We, we have the custodian, you know, to, to hold the asset. The asset is it, not on you. After you are tokenized, you are, your, your, your asset will, will transfer to custodian first. Yeah. It's the same like you are trading stock in the stock market. The stock is not you, but it's on the TSD, then hold the stock first. If you want the real stock, you can go to TSD to get the real uh, stock pin. This is the, the, the same. But it's like uh, the, the custodian now, uh, I, I, I cannot tell you the name, but I think the Singapore will end up yet it's like a low model. And we work fully with the government in the Indonesia, uh, Philippines, and Malaysia to do, to do the same. Uh, except Thailand, because Thailand have like a different law for do something like that. But after the Singapore passed this law, okay, uh, this custodian will not own your property, but it's like a custodian for property. If someone chose this NFT, they can claim. After claim, this NFT will uh, burn or destroy. Okay, it means if you want NFT, you choose your, your asset to mint. Okay? You can transfer, transfer, transfer. If someone want to get their, this asset, you can go to this custodian and burn and get like a paper, yeah, this idea. You, you may just want to add something on, on this? Um, yeah, the, the model you're describing, uh, maybe some of you know Digix. Um, 
back in the day, they wanted to tokenize gold, similar model, you show up with your token, you get gold in exchange. So it's, it's kind of a well-established model to have a depository, a custodian. And then the legal structure to actually hold the asset depends on the country. But the most simple way is like a trust. Uh, and, and then in Thailand, uh, there, there is a legal framework for that that's a bit more complicated maybe than other countries. Um, but uh, we, for sure we're going to see that kind of setup uh, like in Singapore and in other jurisdictions. Maybe that will kind of nudge the, the regulators here to make it easier to hold real assets in an NFT without going through the full uh, ICO process, right? Hopefully, um, yeah. Let's take more questions. Yeah, and one so long. Coming over, over there. So you mean why uh, is there value and how how would there be value on a video that uh, you would do on a photo of a script? Mm -hmm. So a bit comes working on it, but maybe not yet. Can publicly share, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, probably have a plan. Okay. Um, now uh, we have uh, two kind of the asset as, that we're talking about. One is the physical, yeah, and another one is uh, uh, the user create content, something like that. Yeah. Uh, this is the good question, and we have uh, a lot of solution to do that. Okay, because every time when when you're talking about in in our system. I accept that tokenize in the big cap system, but uh, we should to we 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 worry about uh, copyright because we don't know this, that you do do is uh, legal or not legal. Okay, that why we uh, we have a lot of solution to check. Okay, but something like a script uh, or movie clip or anything, you know, uh, it have. A lot of solution to check like you like uh, uh, some library, but it's not free. That why that we 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 try to talk how to make that like a low lower cost, you know. Like uh, if someone put some image to organize, okay. in in the first maybe it 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 cheap, but if have a lot of image tonight, you know. Uh, if you come later maybe. Uh, for checking is expensive, expensive and more expensive because something is a lot. Yeah. This is where we try to find the solution, the best solution for you to tokenize. Because I know everyone uh, want to tokenize as cheap as he can pay and he want to sell. Yeah. This is a solution that we try to working on. But we will have solution in the future to yeah. solve. But um, yeah, so tokenization, but how exactly would it work maybe? Uh, we we work uh we use AI a lot of AI to to checking but for the pricing it it really hard to to talk the pricing yeah and we not uh decide yet how how to how to end up your price be maybe it like ICO or anything you no know? maybe we we got I uh, use the ICO model to you after you make it you can code by yourself if no one buy you maybe zero. If someone buy it's okay, or maybe auction, yeah, a lot. I think we have a lot of things for, for you to pay that, yeah, to, to be fair together. Uh, for that matter, <clears throat> I want to give you some example. Uh, we are working with uh, Thai national artists, like the top artists that he draw pictures, like cool paintings. 
So we were discussed a lot on this. How do we prove that picture is, is real, right? So instead of instead of figuring out which picture is real, we we instead use a museum museum. So put the real picture in the museum and under the picture we we're thinking about having a digital display saying this is an NFT and which address is owning this and even if that address is KYC, who is the owner of this address? So it's trying to do the opposite thing. So back to real world again, right? That way we can always have a proof in, in the real world that this is now an NFT and the museum approved on it. So certification, right? right. Yeah. I hope it's replied to your question. All right, I'm jumping over there. Hi, uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first question is for BitCup. It's uh, so you're gonna build your own blockchain, right? So not run on Ethereum. So <clears throat> it's like Flow, I think, like NBA Top Chop. So if I buy like your uh, NFT or BitCup, I cannot, I could not sell it on OpenSea or whatever other platform, right? And uh, second question is uh, that you said about you can. Uh, do the NFT for laptop, but one the big problem for Thailand is like how you cut, how could you can control the quality? You know, like secondhand car. Uh, I bought a secondhand car in New Zealand. You have warrant of fitness, which is like you know the good standard, but like secondhand car in Thailand is like, you know, yeah. So that's the first question. Second question, uh, it's about the gaming business. You know, right now there's like like Decentraland. They have like um, Sand Sandbox. And they have like um, engine. Yeah, I never tried engine, but I, I see one thing is really cool for engine. They kind of have like a bridge. You know, like um, if you have like an item on, uh, let's say, like war game, maybe you can bring it into Mario. That's really cool. What do you think in the future? Like, uh, do you think like in the future, maybe I can, because there's uh, many, many player, many games. I don't know like what game going to be the most hit. But maybe I can bring, you know, the item to cross to the other game. What do you think about that? Yeah, thank you. So should I try to recap quickly? Uh, first about your um, NFT, how is it? Um, the platform? marketplace? Yep. Where, how will it be uh, compatible uh, if you buy it on Ethereum, transfer it to Bitcup? That's the first question. Well, our marketplace would be just like any other marketplaces that would be compatible with ERC721. The thing is, it's just on different world. It's just on different chain, right? So from the artist standpoint, we cannot stop you to put your asset in any store or in any marketplace in any way, right? So, so the NFT I bought from your platform in OpenSea, I just confused because like, for example, like in, on the NBA Top Shop, they just have their own ecosystem I cannot sell my car in other platforms. Yes. Because flow is, is different. Flow is not like Ethereum. It, it's a totally different blockchain. But for for us, I can see some way to do that. Like for example, we can sync with the mainnet first and then sync again, that kind of thing. Right? As, as long as it's Ethereum compatible. All right, and your second question was about uh, the different games and how you uh, transfer NFTs from different games. Yeah, he asked about how, how to know the pricing from the second-hand car, right? <laughs> the second-hand car or laptop. Uh, quality. Yeah, the quality. Yeah. Uh, when, when you want to change from your physical to NFT, you cannot change by yourself. Yeah, that I, I told you, we have uh, two regulators. Yeah, one the auditor, one is legal. Legal want to check did your, your car is your car already, you know? And the custodian will will check everything. Yeah, uh, the one that we call like uh, the, the creditor, the creditor will give you value for your car. That that why you will know who is the one that give you value. So, so once I do the NFT, yeah. I have to give my car to the custodian. custodian right? Exactly. And I cannot use it. You can use it. I can use it. Yeah, you can use. And if I break it, ah, uh, you you want to responsibility. 
yeah because they have legal you know it it mean you want to have like a maybe uh insulin you know after you book you have insulin there they have a lot of to protect you know, this is the, the easy it is can like a, your laptop after you make a nft you throw it you know you, it's that toy you know? but because you have the legal and the credit creditor then they can sue you if you shoot it yeah it's it easy okay all right um Sir, yeah sorry so yeah of course yeah sure <laughs> on the gaming um angle right you you were asking about the transferability of uh, nfts purchased in one game across not multiple uh, games uh my, my personal view on this um is that first you need to see across different console i mean the same game can be played first across like mobile pc uh or console right so first thing i would say is to exchange the same nft across different platforms that would be the first way within the same game right but a lot of developers are not doing the same game right now the same skus right for different platforms so already if you could play the same items on across different platforms that would be a very good stuff to have as a first step then coming to uh, interplayability across uh, gaming publisher i would say well you have this uh, blockchain gaming alliance right uh, which ubisoft is part of and probably other publishers uh, in the near future right so i believe between themselves there will be something at some point right that will be um uh, coming up right to fusion if they want to work together but it's more on the alliance i would say aspect after if you talk uh, about game developers and publishers that have a large uh, amount of games right like game love we have probably 30 40 games that are currently on shelves right and and i think from that perspective that would make sense right to have the same item across different games provided it it makes sense for the end users, right? To have, let's say, Asphalt is about cars. Dragon Mania is all dragons. Despicable Me is a different universe. So it, it has to have a uh, um, value, right? For the end users to, to exchange that items and, and really see themselves, you know? The way I see myself, uh, NFT is also a person of personification of your digital footprint, right? um reproducing the social behavior in the real life in the virtual world right that's what they call the metaverse uh, how you express that right all the gen z and and the millennials maybe which i belong to are now seeking different uh, different ways right on the digital world especially with covid right um to to be different to be unique so you can buy sneakers so you can buy whatever you want but it's also like people don't go out of their homes right now, except in Thailand maybe, but it's pretty rare. So, well, how do you do make yourself different, right? And owning that specific uh, NFT from a game that you can use, and I would say it's not across only gaming content, but now the lines between entertainment, we have a dancer here, uh, we have music, we have uh, probably arts. We, we see a lot of uh, barriers, you know, between entertainment that are, uh, collapsing right so you see a lot of music into games games made out of music we just made the games for queens for instance for bohemian rhapsody right so it's like all the games based on tap dance which is 15 years ago now it's booming right? so we we see like the cycle of uh, what people expect right the skateboard and all those things is stuff like when we were probably uh, 12 years old and it's coming back so i i really think yeah that uh, breaking the barriers between games or between contents and using the same NFT across different entertainment experience will, will come to life. I don't know when. And just to add on that, don't forget that blockchain and NFT, it's very new. Uh, today, NFT, if I'm sorry if I made a mistake, but I think it's $300 million in one year of market, which is uh, nothing at all. Uh, so it's just starting. And uh, now we have different blockchains where um, different games from different platforms. It takes time for all of that to harmonize and uh, just takes some time. So, anyway. Hi there, uh, my name is Todd. I'm the uh, founder of Block Arrow. We're also a blockchain uh, startup uh, specialized on aerospace asset management. So uh, actually we 
we essentially create NFTs for aircraft engines, parts. We didn't call them that though. We called them asset profiles or digital passports. Uh, I think for investors, we'll start calling them NFTs. But of course, the you know the challenge, and I, I think I, I liked hearing it from you guys a little bit about it's really a digitalization that's also occurring. So blockchain is driving digitalization of certain industries. Uh, uh, you know, like industrial applications, like our own uh, aerospace. Um, but I, I think the problem that I keep hearing is I hear about legal enforceability and, and regulatory uh, issues. The way I see it is these layer two solutions or private blockchains are what is going to sort of bring the uh, uh, the, the regulatory element or the uh, very uh, real-world connections between what's happening on the public chain and what's then affected to that real-world asset. So where do you see the uh, uh, the best examples of how that's been successfully achieved? Because if I'm buying an NFT on Ethereum, when I transfer the ownership of the NFT on Ethereum, I don't want it to just transfer on Ethereum. I want it to actually have an impact that transfers the rights or even the physical access or something to the real world asset. Do you have any thoughts or examples or case studies you could share with us about that? So, yeah, I, thought, um, I can share on this one. Uh... All right, yeah, I can share on this one. Uh, the, the best example for the today's STOs, uh, securities token offering. So a number of countries have uh, legal frameworks that are extremely clear, uh, for example, Switzerland, on uh, how you can tie the ownership of a token to the ownership of a financial security. Um, and so it's quite successful there uh, to tokenize bonds, uh, SME shares, uh, debt, uh, other instruments. And uh, it comes down to the legal framework, right? The enforceability of on-chain property as evidence for off-chain property, right? Uh, and so when there is a strong drive from the regulators, like there was in, in Switzerland for securities, uh, we can see it's adopted quite quickly. Uh, and so hopefully uh, this is going to be basically recognized by court, right? So as long as you say your, your asset representing a, an aircraft engine, for example, um, in the court where it's owned, uh, we recognize that as long as the token belongs to Mr. X, uh, we can enforce his property of the actual engine, right? Um, that's going to solve the problem, but uh, it usually goes hand in hand with talking to a lawyer. Right? But, but that's the dispute resolution problem that you see right. with the legal enforceability. However, what I'm kind of trying to understand is I don't want to get into disputes. That's like the outlier scenario. I want when I transfer on chain, on a public chain, mm -hmm. that other things are happening that affect like the, tr the transfer. It's not just Right. This is what I and this okay. is where I uh, think we all have to kind of figure out how we tackle these problems. So I completely agree with what you were saying about layer two uh, to tackle that issue. Um, so layer two, let's say you have a private blockchain with aero industry participants, and all those uh, participants sign an agreement saying whoever owns a token has the rights uh, to own the actual underlying property. So in those kind of private scenario. Uh, it's quite easy to enforce because it's you know commercial agreements between private parties, and so you could say when you become a member of my chain, you have to sign this bunch of paper that says that you recognize the, the property of a token. So I completely agree with what you're saying on layer two. Yeah. yeah. All right. Question only from the front. Hi, uh, I have two questions. One for the gaming industry. Uh, basically, I see most of the games right now are really like you have your inventory. You can kind of like farm in the world to get whatever assets that you can collect in the game, or either you can even earn them somehow if you do some missions or whatever. Uh, do you think this kind of assets would be useful as ESC721? And it would create like a new kind of dynamic inside the game, let's say like a multiplayer game that you actually farm a specific asset that is really rare in the game. And then you can do some trading with these assets. Uh, this is something that might be actually something interesting in the game to have the economy inside the game directly and not on the outside of the game. And uh, also another question more about like the, you know, the financial aspect of uh, 
uh, ESC721. The two things like the ESC, ESC20, which is up here with ESC721, because if you think about it, like ESC20 is just like a kind of like a, a generalization of the ESC721, and any ESC20 could be kind of like created with ERC721. It would be like really expensive and so on. But in like kind of like an ideal future, is ERC20 still useful or 721 will just take over everything? Technical questions. We are talking about token standard on Ethereum for people who are not really familiar with uh, with it. ERC20. ERC yeah, I think I can talk about the first part of the question quite comfortably. Uh, which is the monetization and the paywalls, right? And the different economy that we see with the uh, NFT taking uh, place into the games, right? So what, what I see is it changes not only me playing the games, but people playing for me on, on my same accounts, right? To help me get more of the NFT and I share the value, right? That's what uh, I understood from a lot of people um, in, in, in the gaming uh, NFT centered um, approach, right? So I think that's slightly different than how people usually play, I would say, uh, a game. And, and probably the exchange within the community is a lot stronger, right? When, um, when, when they will get those very rare items that will uh, have two priority um, impacts, right? One is on the user acquisition, right? Because you have this existing community and second is on the retention, right? So it will help the game have a much longer uh, life lifetime, right, on the shelf because people are really owning something they want to play and they just don't want the game to disappear, right? And when you look at the top charts of, uh, of Play Store and App Store, and again, NFT is outside of these charts right now, but those are games that are three to four plus years old, right? So there is nothing really breakthrough that can hit the top charts. First, user acquisition is, is much more uh, expensive right now. It accounts for 30% of one gaming company, right, in terms of uh, uh, turnover, right? So, well, 30% goes to Google Apple, 30% goes to the marketing spends. Uh, you still have to pay the employees and, and have a nice EBITDA at the end of the, <laughs> of the month, right? So, so I think the, the NFT and all this economy, first, is not on Play Store App Store, so you cut the 30%. Second, you have the UA, um, user acquisition, sorry, uh, elements, right, which is more community-led uh, things, right? So I play this, I have these items, uh, come and trade it with me. So it's really the social uh, element to it, and I think it plays a vital role, right? Uh, when you launch on some specific platforms, so if you look at ByteDance, right, they just acquired Montun uh, last week, right? And, and they're going very big into Southeast Asia. Similarly, you have TikTok looking, I mean, like there's TikTok looking into gaming in their platform. So they already have the community and probably they'll be looking at, uh, yeah, adding more of those innovation inside their games, just like what Nine was doing. All right, and anybody will not want to reply on the token standard? Uh, do you think that the uh, ERC721 is going to replace ERC20? And if so, why? Guillaume, maybe you want to, to explain? So, no. uh, yeah. I think uh, too, too high often that you go to get the ECC cannot be just get the ECC in my opinion. You know? But then that it, it comes from uh, the chain. It means in the future we have. But now we have ERC20 because every H. Yeah. If you go to uh, Binance, Binance have the new standard uh, called BEP20. Uh, it's like uh, a little bit modified. Yeah. I think uh, in the future we will have a lot of standard, but it depends on how can we connect to every standard and then you can exchange every standard together. This is how how become do. This is not the become become never have only the Ethereum asset. We have all the chain asset, but you can change every asset. Okay, you can change every asset to Taiba. I think it this is the same. Yeah, in the future, in the stand, it will have a lot of standard happen in the blockchain and have another block like a flow. Yeah, 
all the big cup we think we want to make bread from you to every as as that can share together. Quick, uh, just a quick one. Uh, there is an interesting project that built a, a wrapper for 721 to ERC20. Uh, and so I agree with you that probably not many standards are going to remain. Uh, I think for me, it's more likely that the, the standard that's going to become the most used is the one that's the simplest to implement. And when you think about it, ERC20 is like a core, right? And everything else is more like an extension. So I would say it's more likely to see wrap ERC721 in an ERC20, which also makes them divisible, right? Uh, I, I think that's probably where the, the standardization is going to go, so that you have NFTs in your wallet, uh, which all wallets support ERC20. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to have a last question, <laughs> because I think yeah. it's going to be a bit technical. Maybe last questions for the audience. Yeah, uh, where do you see NFT getting incorporated into the fashion industry? And is it going to have any effect in the fashion industry? Who wants to take a fashion question? Who's the most fashionable on stage? Only one of you guys. <laughs> I'm not so much into fashion. <laughs> but I, I love the question, though. Uh, now I, I saw uh, what Louis Vuitton did. Uh, so I guess that's the most... Uh, Linked experience I, I heard about, but that was more on the private. Um, uh, sorry, uh, the anti -cor uh, not corruption. Uh, yeah, counterfeit. Sorry, I lost my word. Right, that was really about tracking uh, the traceability of the uh, of the bags or of the items that they were producing, and they got involved into uh, NFT for that particular aspect. Right, so you have the physical goods as well as the uh, digital. Uh, validation of that things and you can track all along the way where it comes from um, and after I, I think it's just like fashion like a piece of art right that you will have uh, there behind your shelves on your digital muse museum right so that's uh, I think what, what I think and and also like a lot of um, fashion designer will probably be involved into more digital world just like we mobile right that they got their uh, suitcase, right, with artists and, and fashion, probably uh, people that are involved into this. All right, and um, I think it's already one hour, one hour and a half, and uh, some people might be thirsty or uh, hungry. We have some pizzas and beer for everybody. If you have other questions, please feel free to uh, reach out to our speakers. It's a long subject, it's, it's very large. We try to really uh, uh, go just above it, and uh, I hope you get you gain some understanding of it. If you have further questions, we are here, very happy to talk about it. It's the point of the meetup as well to discuss all together. And uh, we really thank you a lot for joining tonight, and really appreciate. Well, thank to our speakers, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Big Cub has some uh, gifts. All right. Pizza and beer, they are over there. They might not last. Oh, first one, first, so thank you for coming.